one. Let us discuss this example. Actually, it's a result. Okay. So when we have a monotonic increasing function, we have to prove that it is integrable or integrable. Okay. Let us see how to prove. Let me write a given information. Uh, yes, we have already mentioned. So function f defined on closed interval a b to r is monotonic increasing function. Okay. So let me draw the graph of function. So function will be like this. Okay. It's monotonic increasing. It will be like this function f. See function need not be continuous getting but see for simplicity I have drawn here continuous function. Let us go further what we have to prove. We have to prove the function is Riemann integrable. So that means there are two ways to prove the function is Riemann integrable. Either we can show upper sum is upper integral is equal to lower integral then we say the function is Riemann integrable or uh, in see in previous video we have already studied one method that means for given epsilon or for every epsilon there exists a partition p epsilon such that upper sum minus lower sum is less than epsilon. So that technique also we have. We are going to use the second technique now. So for that we need to have one epsilon. Let us take one epsilon. Let epsilon greater than 0 be given. Okay. After that, what will I do? I will find a partition of closed interval AB. Okay. Let me write here. Let P is equal to, I am considering partition A is equal to X0, X1, X2 and so on. Xn is equal to B. B a partition. Okay. B a partition of close interval a b let me show it here so we have partition like this okay we have a partition like this so because of this partition region will be divided into yes these parts i'm drawing a rough sketch here okay okay so such that i'm adding one condition such that so that condition is norm of partition is less than epsilon by f of b minus f of a epsilon by f of b minus f of a so maybe you will get confused what is meaning of norm p norm p that means norm of any partition that is nothing but length of okay la largest sub interval that means see because of this partition the main interval is divided in sub interval so we'll find the largest interval and its length is nothing but norm of a partition See, norm of p is less than this one. That means length of each sub interval is less than epsilon by f of b minus f of a. So this is a very important part of our proof. So let me call it as star. Let us go further. So after that, we will define capital MI. We will define small MI. So now, now capital MI. So I think you are familiar with definition of capital MI, which is equal to supremum of supremum of f of x such that xi minus 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to xi. That means in each interval, okay, or each sub interval function has some maximum value that is nothing but capital MI. But see the function is increasing, okay, function is increasing. So that's why function will have its maximum value at right end of an interval. Let us see, for example, if you consider the first interval. A, that means x0 this is x1 x2 if you consider the first interval x0 x1 so function is increasing so that's why it will have maximum value at x1 if you consider the second interval as function is increasing it will have the maximum value at x2 similarly for next interval function will have the maximum value at x3 and so on that means at right end of each interval function will have its maximum value so here also same thing will happen so right end of interval is xi. So function will have maximum value at xi. So I'm writing f of xi. Let us go further. Now we will uh, define small mi. Let me mention here. Now small mi. Will you tell me the definition of small mi? So obviously I should write huh, for all i running from 1 to n. That thing I should mention. Small mi is infimum of f of x such that xi minus 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to xi that means infimum the lowest value of function in that interval that is nothing but small mi see obviously as the function is increasing function will have the minimum value its minimum value at left end of an interval so if you talk about the first interval function will have the minimum value at x0 since function is increasing so it will have the minimum value at, le at left corner so if you talk about the second interval, the function will have minimum value at x1. So in this way, 
okay so here the left end is xi so it will have the max minimum value at xi okay xi minus 1 f of xi minus 1 so here we have at a right end and here we have at a left end let us go further after that what will i do i will consider upper integral upper sum minus lower sum let us see so consider i am considering upper sum upf minus lpf okay i should mention here for all i running from 1 to n let us put their values what is the definition of upf that is summation capital mi delta xi i running from 1 to n minus let me mention here summation i running from 1 to n small mi delta xi see if you try to subtract what will happen uh, see we can take summation common we can take delta xi common and we can write small, capital mi minus small mi let me write that thing so by taking summation and delta xi common we will have this one but will you tell me what is delta xi delta xi means length of each interval see length of each interval is obviously less than or equal to norm p since norm p means length of largest interval so length of each interval is always less than or equal to length of largest interval okay so we, we have this small smaller uh, intervals so we are talking about it so we can write less than or equal to summation i running from 1 to n capital mi minus small mi norm p since delta xi is always less than or equal to norm p so that norm p is independent on i so we can take it outside so this is equal to norm p summation i running from 1 to n capital mi minus small mi do you remember already we have found out the value of capital mi and small mi capital mi is nothing but f of do you remember that is f of xi and small mi is nothing but f of xi minus 1 so let us put their values here so this is equal to norm p okay summation i running from 1 to n f of xi minus f of xi minus 1 so uh, will you guess what i'm going to do yes i'm going to expand this summation let us see what will happen okay i'm going to expand the summation so this is equal to norm p okay so let us put i is equal to 1 so f of x1 minus f of x0 since 1 minus 1 0 i'm going to put i is equal to 2 so it will be f of x2 right minus f of x1 2 minus 1 1 i'm going to put x is uh, i is equal to 3 now so plus f of x3 minus f of x2 and so on at the end we have to put uh, i is equal to n then we will have f of xn minus f of x n minus 1 tell me can we cancel anything here yes definitely this f of x1 and uh, minus f of x1 will get cancelled uh, f of x2 and uh, minus f of x2 will get cancelled similarly that f of x3 will get cancelled with minus f of x3 and minus f of xn minus 1 also will get cancelled with one term will be ha here having positive sign so we'll get cancelled what I want to say just first and last terms will be there remaining all terms will get cancelled so therefore we will have norm p okay what is the first term oh, sorry last term f of xn and the first term having minus sign f of x0 right so f of xn xn means last term that means b getting so that is nothing but let me write norm p f of xn means f of b and f of x0 x0 means a so this is a but do you remember that equation star equation star says norm p is less than epsilon by f of b minus f of a let me use that so this is less than epsilon by f of b minus f of a and this bracket also we have f of b minus f of a let me mention from star okay let me remove this diagram it is not required now okay so we will have some more space to solve this example yes it is one well. see these two brackets will get cancelled to each other so we will have epsilon do you remember we started with what we started with upper sum minus lower sum and what we got less than epsilon so let me mention therefore therefore upf minus lpf is less than epsilon so already in previous video we have studied Riemann criteria okay for integrability 
and using that criteria we can say yes function is riemann integrable on closed interval ab so therefore f is r integrable r integrable on closed interval ab so therefore we can say that function if it is monotonic then it is riemann integrable so make a screenshot of it then we'll stop thank you bye bye